Well, we started out the SHOT Show uh, looking for the Crossman booth, and we were surprised that there wasn't one. But Crossman is now part of the umbrella group of Velocity Outdoors, which includes the old Crossman, Benjamin, all those brands, plus a couple of new ones. So that's where we started our journey, was uh, with the Velocity Outdoors. Well, good morning. We're here at the SHOT Show 2019 with uh, Philip Guadalupe. He's, uh, well, tell us what your position at uh, Crossman is. So, uh, good morning, guys. Philip Guadalupe again. Uh, my background is uh, 10 years in the Marine Corps. Uh, I came to Crossman about five years ago, started up in the factory as a group leader and moved my way up into product management. And now my job is uh, I maintain all the the PCP air rifles, the target rifles, uh, and, and accessories, and uh, ammunition. One of the new guns for this year is the, the Bushmaster MPW. D we brought out the DPMS SBR last year, and it's been a huge success over the last seven months of uh, how much we've done in volume with that. And so we want to do something a little bit different, unique, to change it up a little bit. And uh, the reason why we, I chose the name MPW, multi-purpose weapon, is to kind of it's adaptable to the consumer. And I can kind of show you. So you can see it, it's a little bit more compact than the SBR. Uh, it has a mock suppressor with the barrel runs out to the, to the end. Um, so you still maintain the velocity, same rate of fire. It's adaptable because it's a six position AR buttstock and it's AR compatible. So you can uh, change it to uh, any kind of unique AR buttstock that you want. Mm -hmm. Um, same same features, same magazine, so you can sit there and use that. And then we added a red dot sight um, for right, for your right. quick target acquisition. I shot one look just like that yesterday at the range, <laughs> red dot and all. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And so I, I like it because it's uh, very compact, and you can sit there and and, and have fun with them and shoot with the. So. Uh, did Did you do any internal changes from last year to this year, or is this just a different design? Uh, it's just it's more a different design, different look, and going with a different sight system, uh, especially being a, a 10, 15, maybe 20 yard uh, uh, target target gun. A red dodge is perfect for that. Yeah, right. so, uh, I think this will be a great item for some of the law enforcement that want to do some training at a, at a lower end price because uh, CO2 ammunition, uh, BB ammunition is cheap and it functions just like a real AR. So when you run out, uh, the bolt locks to the rear, you can do quick changes in the magazine, get back in and ready to rock and roll. All right. So. Cool. What is this one uh, going to retail for? So this, uh, because it has the red dot sight, it's going to retail for $199. Uh, we have the SBR available for $180. Uh, and then you can buy it at, uh, uh, at dicks.com or Field and Stream for about $200, $220, and it comes with a red dot sight. Okay, cool. So. Well, that's, uh, that's certainly something we're looking forward to. Like I say, I shot one just like that yesterday at the range, and yeah. it was a lot of fun. So this is one you could... Uh, do in the garage and yeah, you still garage, have that much. Do it in the basement. As long as you have a safe back uh, backstop, the um, the BBs don't ricochet again. So you can sit there and do all the the transistor drills you want to come through and get ready to rock and roll. Okay. All right. Cool. Let's go take a look at some of the other uh, new guns you got. Uh, it's a Remington 1100. So let's talk about this one here. What's happening with it? So this, this is our new uh, youth style shotgun, uh, Remington 1100. It's a variable pump action, just like the our 760 Pump Master, dual ammo, single shot uh, pellet loader. Um, then you also got your BB quick access BB loading port in the bottom, similar to the 2100. Holds a thousand BBs and uh, up to 700 feet per second or when it comes to velocity. Um, the, the 1100 is one of the Remington's iconic shotguns. So we went after that load with some minor uh, tweaks to it. Um, we, we changed up the grip area so it's more comfortable for young shooters where, and went to a bladed sight versus a bead sight just for more durability um, when it comes to the shotgun. Uh, but other than that, it's a little fun fun shotgun to shoot with and you can start them young with this. Uh, this is a smooth bore or yes, rifle bore? Well, you know, our cameraman was telling me you can actually load three BBs <laughs> and turn it into a real scatter shot. <laughs> Be, I had to test that out myself, but it's not recommended at this point. Uh, as long as you have a safe backdrop, you know what you're doing. I mean, it can't hurt. So. Right. Okay. And what is this one going to retail for? Uh, this will be about a fifty fifty dollar retail. 
Um, so it, it's a it's an entry level uh, uh, variable pump gun for kids. Cool, good youth gun. And then we have some changes to the 392, 397 series. Yep. So this is your adult variable pump hunting gun. Um, so obviously it's the 392 action, 397 action, and we wanted to change it up, kind of revive it a little bit, come up with a, a modern style design, um, but still yet yeah, it's uh, traditional. Some key features, you'll see a recessed uh, grip area. The, the forearm is also flared out, so it allows you to uh, have better grip for the pumping action, bring it back. You also get the rubber uh, butt pads right. for better grip for holding it up. Um, it's going to be uh, synthetic, so it, it's a little bit lighter than, than the wood version. Uh, right now this is uh, first off the tool, so we don't have the texture on it, but uh, this will be available come uh, uh, March, April time frame. Or more like April, April this year. Okay, and what, while we're at it, we talked a little bit before about the future of wood stocks. Yes. Um, so what's happening there? So, Going forward, uh, this would only only be in the synthetic stock. Uh, our wood production has kind of, uh, or our wood stock version of this kind of died down. So we're putting all our, our efforts into the synthetic. Um, and it also helps balance the increased cost of some of the things that we've been impacted on. So we can still give them uh, the same gun, same performance to the consumer uh, at the same price. Right. Okay, is that a trend for all air guns? That I, are going I would to imagine that a lot of things have been impacted um, by some of the, the, the tariff effects. So. Yeah. Okay, well, while we're at it, we talked too about the old 140s and early 760s being self-cockers. Are you going to bring that back? Uh, there's nothing on the table. Uh, we'll, we'll, we could take that under consideration, but it, there's always a safety factor when, when, when it comes to something like that. So. All right, well, I'm just making a suggestion. What is this going to retail for when it comes out? Uh, the, depending on placement, anywhere between 150 to 175 Okay. Similar to the current price. Yeah, yeah. okay. Good. Last year, we came out with uh, the, the Magfire, right. we called the Multi-Shot. Um, initially, it was a two-step two process. You had cocked it, and you pushed a bolt to, to feed the pellet. Uh, we didn't launch that, and what we ended up doing is taking a step back, redesigned the, uh, the mechanism, and now it's an auto-loading auto brake barrel. Uh, it, it takes a Marauder-style magazine. Um, its initial launch is going to be unique to the brake barrel, and then in the future, it will be compatible to both, but uh, for initial launch, uh, part of it's because of the, the spring mechanism was changed to prevent some of the, the, the jamming issues that we saw early on. Um, but going forward, it, it, it's going to eventually um, go for both um, in the future. Okay. And to kind of give you an idea... Well, let me back up there. So yeah. that you're redesigning some of the Marauder features to accommodate the new magazine that will be going forward be both for this and the Marauder. Yep. yep. Um, to kinda, will, will that be compatible with older Marauders? Yes. So once it's compatible to the Marauder, it's gonna it's gonna be compatible to all. Okay. So, all right. So you can see a little bolt mechanism, and as you cock it, a shuttle pops up. This bolt comes through, pushes the pellet into the magazine, feeds the pellet into the the shuttle, and then if you notice that it's more uh, it's a cone shape, right, and it right. mates into where the the breech is. Gotcha. So as you bring it back down it starts to bring that, that shuttle with it and the pellet is now in that shuttle in line with that barrel ready to shoot and if you have a jam you can simply take this out and it's easy to replace back in no problem close that um, and it goes from there um, as far as the piston uh, it's the MP Elite so we made some minor tweaks to the MP2 platform now you have the MP, MP Elite uh, the trigger is the same clean brake trigger and uh, for the show, we just kind of modify so it doesn't make the loud, loud pop. So, but so th the this one is a the last year's. They called it a repeater, but there's a lot you had to do to make it repeat. This one just break the barrel and yep. you're in there. Okay, so there's a couple of versions of this I understand that are coming out. Can you talk about the differences? Yeah, so we're gonna have three different uh, models coming out. This is the Magfire Mission. Uh, has the 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 pistol grip. Um, the tactical look to it. Um, this is going to be at one of our, our, our higher price points of $179.99. Then we'll have a Woodstock version that will be at the same uh, price point, and that's the, the Nomad. And then we'll have the Ultra, 
the Magfire Ultra, and it's going to be at the lower price point of one forty nine ninety nine. And it's just a it's a it's a same same technology performance, just a, a smaller uh, slimmer stock for that. It's going to be more of a conventional stock. Yep. With the, so with the it's actually gonna it's gonna actually gonna have like this stock on it, gotcha. um, outfitted for this platform. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, head over to the uh, pre-charge guns and see what's going on there in the compressors. So last year we came out with the Fortitude. Um, this year we're having the Gen 2 version of it. So when we initially launched the Fortitude, we immediately started getting some uh, feedback on certain things. Uh, one being the, the, that it was harder to cock, uh, the trigger pull was a little bit heavier. Even though it's the same trigger that's in the Discovery Maximus, um, we didn't really see that that as an issue before until they until they start bringing up with this gun so what we ended up doing was we reduced the cocking effort by 34 percent for the fortitude and in turn reduced the trigger pull by 20 percent so now it's a three to four pound trigger versus a five five and a half pound trigger um also uh, that's something you can't really see externally but the one feature that we added externally is the the adjustable hammer spring right so now what you can do as a consumer, you can take this gun, uh, move back the, the preload on the, the hammer spring, and essentially have a nine to 12 foot pound gun for target shooting, and you'll get 200 shots or more um, by doing that at about 600 feet per second velocity. Uh, two to four turns in is factory setting, so you're gonna get your 800 to 900 feet per second uh, at 90 shots, and then a little bit more if you want more velocity out of it, uh, six turns max, then you're gonna get, get about 60, 60 consistent shots. Okay, and in, in terms of the internals, and this was mainly a, an issue with the springs, or were there other changes Yeah, so too? We, we balanced it better with the, the hammer spring and the valve spring to get the same, the same maintain the same performance, but enhance the shot string a little bit better for the consumer. Right, okay. And is this, uh, this has a magazine? Yep, same uh, magazine as the Marauder. Okay. Um, and then on the serial number, it'll say G2 for uh, uh, Generation 2. Okay, good. And what are we gonna retail this one for? It'll still maintain the 299 uh, retail MSRP, and that's the gun only without the scope. Okay, as far as uh, Phil, I know we didn't talk about this earlier, yeah. but you have a capacity on this in terms of the air? Uh, I believe it's 135 cc's. It's a smaller reservoir, whereas the Marauder is uh, around 215. Okay. So, but uh, the pressure setting for this is 3,000 psi, and with the regulator built in, it's uh, regulated at 1,600 psi. Okay. And then how it's tuned, it's tuned for like uh, same tune as the Discovery Maximus. So it's really designed to go down to 1,000 psi. So once it gets jumps off that regulator, you're still able to maintain uh, consistent shots for a little bit further down to, until you get down to 1,000. Okay, that's so. a lot of flexibility. Uh, so yeah, that's a great looking gun. Yep. Okay. Our Marauder has been one of our flagship guns. So we, we came out with six additional SKUs. Um, and what it is is you're, you're able to buy it with the Lothar Walter barrel without even having to go through the custom shop. Right. So you have your wooded, wooden synthetic 17722 with the Lothar Walter. And if it comes with a Lothar Walter barrel, it has a, a Picatinny breech. So it's an, okay. it's an upgraded feature with that. Um, new for this year is the Benjamin Recharge. This is a tank filling solution. Uh, it will fill the guns just directly at a, at a rapid rate. Um, so for tanks, it goes up to 6.8 liters, up to 4,500 PSI. It has a pressure auto uh, setting, so you can shut it off at desired set pressure. It has a built-in radiator, so it's, it's uh, air and water cooled. Um, and it's about half the weight, half the size, uh, compared to some of the compressors that are out there that are tank filling solutions. Uh, you have your cooling system switch, your power on switch. It uh, has oil uh, for the motor. And then you have your oil water separator with the bleed valve um, and your standard foster fitting. Is there is there other filters internal besides this? So there's a, you got the one filter here that right. gets changed uh, every couple months or so. Uh, and then you have your internal one that can change up to uh, six months, depending on how much you use it. And then that's your, your, your main body. Um, that will require to take off the cover and there's a hex nut screw underneath the gauge to, to take that out and then simply pull out the two, the two uh, air filters. Uh, this doesn't have a, a time meter on it, so you have to keep track manually. 
Correct. Um, but speaking about time, this does have a 40 minute timer cut off. So if you're filling tanks, typically you're not gonna fill up a tank from zero all the time. And it's usually maybe the first time you buy a tank, you fill it up from zero, and then you're just doing top offs. Top off. So we added the 40 minute timer to kind of prevent people from running it continuously for a long period of time. Um, it takes about an hour and 20 minutes to hour 30 minutes. So the 40, 40, 45 minute timer is gonna shut off in the middle. And all you gotta do is power it off, power it back on to top that off. And then if you're just topping off the tank, it's gonna take less than in uh, 40 minutes, so you won't have to worry about that. And I notice this has a temperature gauge on it. Yep. And uh, the temperature gauge is here uh, in Celsius. Um, there is a temperature protection, so if it reaches over, I believe it's 180 degrees Celsius, uh, it will it will uh, cut off. It's getting. Or that mean, that means you're. Uh, 180 degrees Celsius, 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, but it's about. Um, I think it's like 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, and this is intended for your garage. This isn't really a field unit with 12 volt. Sorry. Correct. So it's 110, 10 volt, uh, designed to stay in your garage or uh, basement or something like that. Okay. So, and this will retail for 1,400 bucks, uh, 13.99, and it will be shipping come early May. Early May. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. So that's the new recharge. And I see we still have the Traveler. Has anything happened there with that uh, uh, yep. upgrades? So, or? Uh, from last shot show, we kind of tweaked it a little, a little bit. We added a auto pressure setting. So you set the pressure and it will shut off at that. Um, it's still still the same. It comes with a converter. You can plug in the, the, the alligator clips for the 12 volt batteries. So it's designed to run off your car battery, ATV. I personally ran off a lawnmower because it's right behind my shooting bench. Right, right. Uh, but it's it's portable and lightweight. So okay. and Otherwise the features are similar as far as a fil filter for the water moisture yep. thing. So you got that built in right here. Um, this one is uh, available now in right. stock in, uh, on our website for $549.99. It's amazing how much <laughs> pre-charge technology yeah. has changed. When you start having more pre-charge guns, you need more pre-charge yeah. filling equipment. Yeah, so that that's always been the barrier for the PCP market. You spend a lot, a lot of money just in the gun, but then you also have a filling solution. Obviously, the most economical way is filling it by a pump, even though it's 150 bucks, 200 dollars, but it requires a lot of effort. So over the years, compressors have been coming down in price. Um, and we were one of the ones that came out with the, the lower price point, um, but it, it, eventually you're gonna see them come down cheaper and cheaper over the, over the course of the years. So. Okay, and do you remember that pump that you folks showed here? Oh, maybe four or five, maybe you weren't with Cross, but it was. I think it was before my time, but I know it's. Uh, You've heard the, of it. Yeah, it was the, the Turbo Air. Yeah. They had the, the wings. Yeah. Um, a, funny, a funny story, we were sitting there talking about that a couple months back, and our uh, IP lawyer, he he had one or a couple in his office, and we were talking about it. But uh, I, I'm not sure what ever happened with that, but we never we never followed through. I just wondering because <laughs> it was the, all the rage that one yeah. year here at the show. Yeah. So then we never saw it. So. Yeah, but bringing out another pump is going to step back because okay, gotcha. the the thing in the future is going to make it easier in a consumer and a lower price. So. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of pistols here. Okay, so we have some changes to the uh, venerable 760. So last year, um, when our uh, new CEO, Bob Beckwith, took over, he made an initiative that we redesign the 760. And that was his top priority as taking on uh, a crossman. Um, so we went to the drawing board to see what we can do, and we improved a lot on it. Most of it's internally, but um, so the durability, we uh, reworked the durability of the, of the, the gun, reworked the bolt, uh, improved on the trigger so it's a little bit smoother to pull. We have uh, the recessed area with a, a little bit aggressive uh, grip to it for easier to pump and grip with that. Um, one of the complaints was always that the loading port was too small, so we went with the, the 2100 style loading port in the, the in the grip area, and now we increased the volume reservoir of that so we can get fed up to a thousand BBs into the gun. Uh, we also changed up the stock a little bit, more modernized, but while keeping the traditional the classic look, uh, the classic pump masters were uh, the wood brown and wood, so we went with that to break it up. 
Uh, it's available in brown, pink, and then the new light blue, which is the firearm trend out there. So a lot of the handguns and rifles, you'll see the, 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 the light blue accent to it. Um, other than that, it's, it's still your iconic 760, and we probably sold over 18 million uh, in the course of the 50s plus years. I understand this is a one of your best sellers. Oh yeah, so by by volume and by revenue, this is a, a single gun top seller. Okay, cool. And th these are going to be retailing for what about? Uh, anywhere between on promo from thirty bucks to forty five dollars. So good entry level. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's talk about pistols here. So new for this year, we have the the Night Stalker. People might remember the name over our, um, it was a CO2 repeater uh, yeah. rifle. So we, we re reused that name on this pistol. This is a, a full metal blowback. And what's unique about this one is the fact that it has a built-in laser. Well, obviously, the, you don't have the batteries for this one. Um, <laughs> trust you, it's there. Oh yeah, just trust me, it's there. But uh, a couple years back, prior to last SHOT Show, we acquired Laser Max. So one of the things we wanted to do is kind of in incorporate uh, some of that with that. It's not a, a laser max laser, but that's where ha some of the ideas came from. So the laser is positioned where you see like a guide rod laser and some of the firearms. Uh, laser max, they, they make a lot of the guide rods for like Glock um, and some of the other ones. And basically they take their takedown pin and convert that into a button. So the same thing with this one, you push the button on the side to turn it on and push it on the other side to deactivate it uh, and you can sit there and CO2 blowback. Was, was there anything about the blowback action that, um, I mean, it's pretty unusual in, in air guns now to have the blowback, although I see them coming back. Uh, so the design issues that you had to deal with? No, uh, blowback is, is, is quite common nowadays, but it's, it's typically at your higher price point. So this will be a $100 retail. Um, so a lot of your full metal $100 retail guns will have blowback actions on them. All right, cool. And, and then, <clears throat> new for this year as well is the the Crossman Triple Threat. So you might notice that the it's a revolver based off the Vigilante. New barrels, and we have three barrels that are going to come with the kit. You're going to have a three inch, a six inch, and then a uh, eight inch barrel. So as a consumer, you can uh, adjust it to your needs. It's a simple takedown of that, and there's a screw. Uh, flathead screwdriver, take that out, and you just swap the barrels out, and you're ready to go. So if you want a snub nose, or if you want to look like Dirty Harry with the longer uh, barrel, 8-inch barrel, you can choose it as what you want. Right, make my day. Well, while we're on the subject, what is uh, Velocity Outdoors all about? Can I ask you that? Uh, sure. So, as we started growing as a company, uh, two years ago we bought Laser Max. This past year, we acquired Raven, which is a, a high-end crossbow company, uh, one of the populars out there. We wanted to diversify ourselves to kind of separate us from just being an air gun company. So Velocity Outdoors is, is about the our desire for innovation and bringing it quick to market So and, and for the outdoor industry. So with that being said, that we're going to always look for different ways to grow as a company and Velocity is going to be our, our corporate umbrella name for that and as we take on more brands. Are you bringing the other brands in to the same campus there in New York or are they still independent? How's that um, work? So Laser Max, when we bought acquired the commercial side of Laser Max, that we brought them on board and brought them to the Bloomfield facility. We uh, uh, built their, their part of the manufacturing into our factory. Uh, so that we brought that to Bloomfield and the, the job stayed in, in, in New York. With Raven, when we acquired them, they're still in Superior, Wisconsin. Uh, we did relocate them in Superior to uh, a newer building uh, to expand in, uh, but they're staying where they are for now. So any uh, plans in the works that you're aware of? Or, uh... Uh, that's, that's usually above my pay grade. So. <laughs> Well, listen, that, uh, that's a pretty good overview of the new products from Crossman this year and a little bit of gossip, which is always good. I appreciate that. You did a great job. Thank you for taking the time and chatting with us. Thank you.